Hi everyone, welcome to analysis compilation number 23. I would like to give people a warning for this first clip. It's quite graphic, but I can assure you that no one was seriously injured in this collision. Watch the vehicle approaching quickly from behind that passes my viewer on the left. The 70 year old driver had had a stroke behind the wheel whilst in the fast lane. He later stated he knew something was wrong when he went for the brakes and he couldn't move his legs. There were other passengers in the vehicle. And did you know, if you pull an electronic parking brake, it acts as an emergency brake in a situation just like this. And this is the only analysis I'm doing with this clip. I have done a video on this exact subject in the past. I'll leave a link in the description. If you didn't know this information, please check it out. It's highly unlikely that you're ever going to be faced by this. But if you were, you now know how you could possibly get out of it. The fact that no one was seriously injured is testament to the strength of the cars nowadays and a little bit of luck. This video has been kindly sponsored by Car Vertical. This clip is that graphic, I'm not even going to show the collision. Watch the vehicle emerging from the road on the right, and the cyclist coming the opposite way. The cyclist was struck, and I'm not sure how seriously. But what factors led to this collision happening? Well, the weather makes things difficult to be seen. This point is also highlighted by my viewer not having the windscreen wipers on probably fast oh enough. God, There's plenty of other light sources about which makes the view of the cyclist even more difficult. Having lights on a bike is a legal requirement at night. And for me, this was a massive factor in this collision. My viewer also holds back and lets the vehicle out from the side road. There is space in front of my viewer and maybe the vehicle from the side road felt compelled to go. Try and avoid letting anyone out when there's cyclists on the approach. I'm not certain whether my viewer had even seen the cyclist though. I'd now like you to watch what the cyclist does when the car starts to emerge. They target fix eight, steer to avoid and do very little braking. And this potentially kept them tucked in behind the A pillar blind spot for even longer. But plainly and simply, the vehicle emerging or the driver driving the vehicle emerging has to do much better. And I'm certain they're the only ones who could be held responsible for this collision. But as you can see, there are many factors that lead up to it. I do hope this young lad was all right. I've had a number of people carriers in my time due to having four children. It was the only way to transport everyone with the prams and buggies. The first one I bought was a fair bit of trouble, as we had many problems with it. It was a Volkswagen Schran that I bought from a local well-known dealership in Liverpool. I was in my early 20s and naively trusted them that it was a good car. I wouldn't be so silly nowadays. I'd check any potential purchase I was going to make with Car Vertical beforehand. Although this Hyundai people carrier has suffered some damage, this report would give me some confidence that if it's been repaired properly, it could be a good vehicle. Let me explain why. The photos show some front end damage only and the rest of the vehicle looks in pretty good shape, but we're going to come back to a couple of these photos shortly. The timeline clearly shows that it was damaged quite soon after it was registered and although there are two incidents of damage detected, this can be recorded by different parties at different times for the same incident. The vehicle was put up for sale and ownership changed quite quickly and since then it stayed with the same owner who has had this vehicle for over four years. So everything looks pretty good doesn't it? Well this report did throw up something extra that I would make sure I got checked out properly before I purchased this Hyundai. Have a look at the two pictures showing the two A pillars of this vehicle. They both look to have suffered some damage in the accident. These are important structural parts of the vehicle. Please check out my links in the description and by using the promo code Ashley when you're checking out your next potential purchase, you can save yourself 20%. Thanks Car Vertical. Unfortunately, another very poor emerge and this one's by my viewer. Their observations simply weren't good enough, but what other factors led up to this collision? Well, the first thing I'd like you to have a look at is the vehicle to the left-hand side. 
Why would that stop? Well, it's pretty obvious considering we've seen the clip already. It's given way to the vehicle that approaches from the right. But I think my viewer incorrectly thinks they're waiting for them. And that's why again we see someone compelled to go without observing properly. If I was approaching from my viewer's right like the blue car was, I would have showed much more caution. Where roads cross, meet or intersect, there's always extra danger and people simply just do them too fast. They don't give themselves enough chance to stop if someone just pulled out poorly. And that's what's happened here. Some more poor emerging in this clip. This motorcyclist is about to get rear-ended at the roundabout coming up. And it's by this driver of this Jaguar, who again emerges terribly. Pretty obviously. This is the classic roundabout rear ender, and it's even more dangerous when someone hits a motorcyclist. The roundabout doesn't look too busy on the approach, and I think the motorcyclist is a little hesitant. I think there's a nice big gap after this lorry, but the motorcyclist doesn't see it. But it's all the Jaguar driver sees. It's really good to see the motorcyclist up and walking really quickly, because it looked as though the Jag actually drove over the motorcycle a bit. Two big cases of target fixation. The motorcyclist stared at the lorry and didn't see the gap, and the driver of the Jaguar stared at the gap and didn't see the motorcyclist. And that's how we ended up like this. This clip unfortunately is again too graphic to show. It's from one of my viewers in Melbourne, in Australia. And unfortunately a young child does get struck. However, I've been assured that the young kid was okay. He did go to a hospital, but was released that very same day. Apparently the speed limit on this road is 60 kph, but this is a school section and it's a 40 kph limit. My viewer was doing 49 in his Land Rover Discovery and had no way to anticipate this. Therefore, he was travelling too fast. Let this be a lesson to you. The footage isn't the best, but I'm sure you'll be able to make out what goes on. It's lovely to see my viewer's passenger going to get out and check on them. But what were the factors in this collision? First things first, have a look at the sign on the left. We can all make out that this is a stop junction. These are put there when view is restricted, and the driver of the blue car simply doesn't stop. Adding in the queue in traffic makes this another terrible emerge. And then the cyclist compounds the problem by filtering way too quickly when there's a big chance they're not going to be seen. They should be travelling at a speed where they could stop, quite similar to my viewer in the last clip with a child. Notice the blue car was actually stationary. Interestingly, the conversation about injury or damage is over quickly, and both get on with the day. In this last clip, again, we see a collision, but I don't think my viewer could have anticipated this. They were also driving at a reasonable speed. And this proves that even if you are doing things correctly, you can still get yourself into trouble. That's unfortunately the nature of the beast. This is a one-way street, so my viewer should be all good, shouldn't they? Maybe not. Keep safe, everyone, and I'll see you soon.